I, I would like uh, first to ask uh, about the interrelationship between Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other neurological diseases. Uh, and in your research, are you looking at all of them? Are they interrelated? And secondly, a huge debate before Congress right now is stem cell research. And there are some in Congress that believe adult stem cells are sufficient for the research of our scientists, and others believe that embryonic stem cell research has greater promise. And if you could elaborate if you feel there is promise in, embry in embryonic stem cell research and adult stem cell research for cures for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. First, I would like to thank you for the wonderful job that you're doing in Congress in trying to promote uh, research in Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. You're doing a great job. And uh, they, this is a very uh, political issue, as uh, anybody who's been following Michael J. Fox and Ross Limbaugh know. Uh, the, there's an enormous potential for stem cell research in, in terms of these neurodegenerative diseases and hope, and as my understanding that the population is gradually swinging, I think over 50% in polls have taken are supporting, advocating stem cell research. There's some very complicated ethical questions. I myself have mixed feelings as I see the arguments for and against it, but I think on balance the benefits to mankind of doing this stem cell research are so enormous that there's no ambiguity in my own mind about the value of it. And I think this is true of virtually every qualified scientist who knows anything about this area. Dr. Kaplan. Well, yeah, I would say um, in regard to the stem cell question, one of the things that often gets lost in the debate is the potential value of stem cells, not so much as a treatment, but in the more immediate future to better understand disease processes because with stem cells, we can recapitulate in the laboratory the process of development of many of these cells that ultimately die in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's, and we can even manipulate them to create conditions that are similar to the Alzheimer's or Parkinson's situation. Those are things that are much more readily achievable and that are not being uh, as readily addressed in the environment that limits stem cell research. From a therapeutic standpoint, of course, it would be great to be able to replace cells that are lost over time. Um, and it does have great potential. But in the area of the brain, it's obviously also scientifically a bit complex, which is why the research, of course, needs to proceed. Because you not only need to make the cells become the type of cell you want, but they then have to integrate themselves properly into the brain. And that's very different doing that in an adult human brain than during embryonic development when all of our cells are developing together. So it does have great potential, but I think that the answer to your first question about the similarities between the two diseases also holds enormous promise because if we can better understand why these cells die in the first place, then maybe the politics would be less controversial because I think both sides of the political aisle could agree that if we could get you to keep the cells you were born with in the first place, that would be far better than replacing them. And so the research absolutely needs to continue and needs to accelerate. But I also think that as we understand why these things happen better, we can develop more targeted and earlier interventions to stop them from happening in the first place. 